Who hasn't dreamt of diving into the world of their favorite toys to experience a once in a lifetime adventure far beyond their bedroom walls? Ma préférée, c'est celle-là. Et sa coupe de cheveux, bah, l'adore. Perfect! In the United States, France, and Japan, 18 children and their parents will get to spend an incredible day behind the scenes with some of their country's most popular toys. That is so amazing! They'll visit production workshops and festivals, meet fellow enthusiasts, and learn from talented professionals. Mais c'est trop bien fait. Every encounter will be an opportunity to discover the story behind the successes of these toys and give a snapshot of three different cultures across three continents. Get ready for a remarkable journey. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! wonderful world of toys is always adding new dolls, cars, and stuffed animals to its ranks. But these are toys like we've known them for generations. The realm of high-tech games and robots, on the other hand, is the future of play. These toys define the modern era, though they may be baffling to mom and dad who didn't have this technology growing up. Today in the United States, France, and Japan, a new generation of children is discovering a new generation of toys. In France, Jules is one of thousands of children with a passion for drones. These unmanned aerial vehicles have a variety of high-flying functions. To learn how to pilot his drone like a true pro, Jules is getting a one-on-one -on -one training session with an instructor and the chance to watch a spectacular drone race along the Champs-Élysées. To top it off, he'll also get to meet this brand new sport's very first world champion. En course, les vitesses atteintes sont proches des 150 km h et on est lessivé après 1 minute 30 maximum de course. In the United States, Jonathan, a fan of multiplayer video game competitions known as eSports, will attend his first public match between professional players and learn more about a phenomenon that's changed the face of virtual gaming. Finally, in Japan, we'll meet a mythical robot who's been in the spotlight for the past 30 years. Gundam is a symbol of futuristic technology and has become an integral part of the country's cultural heritage. Today, building these robots is something of an art. Lucky for Akinari, he'll be meeting a Gundam master to learn some tricks for making his own. First, we're stopping off in France, where strange IFOs started appearing in the sky a few years ago. The person piloting these crafts can sometimes be several hundred meters below, or just one or two meters in Jules' case. Je suis dans les drones, ça fait depuis trois ans à peu près. Ce que je préfère, c'est bah, piloter le drone. C'est beaucoup plus amusant que visser des vis. Voilà. Toc. Ce qui est cool, c'est que déjà on peut le faire voler, on peut le faire tourner aussi, on peut lui faire des figures comme des loopings. Allez, vas-y, fais-moi un beau looping. Tu le mets vers toi, viens vers toi. Faut quelques années d'expérience pour apprendre à le piloter un petit peu. Il y a peut-être euh, un petit peu d'amélioration à faire, mais moi je trouve que je pilote quand même bien. Dad is also a fan of this remote-controlled toy, which takes him back to his own childhood. J'avais une voiture euh, télécommandée, j'avais un bateau télécommandé. Ça me rappelle les, les premiers euh, modélismes euh, qu'on pouvait faire à une certaine époque. Lorsque là, c'est un peu plus euh, technologique, quoi. on est passé au XXIe siècle. Ouais, c'est pas mal. Il y a aussi mon père qui aime beaucoup les drones et qui en fait avec moi souvent. Il est fort, moins que moi, mais il est quand même fort. Oula 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 Non, mince Oh, papa, il se débrouille très bien. Je suis le voisin. 
C'est pour papa, là. <rire> On connaît bien les voisins. Hein. <rire> the very first drones were never at risk of landing in the neighbor's garden, since this technological tool was designed exclusively for military use. The name drone came from the machine's distinctive hum, which sounded like buzzing bees. In the early aughts, the highly accurate scans produced by the drone's onboard camera attracted civilian attention. It was seen as a revolutionary imaging tool in sectors like agriculture. And drones might provide even more services in years to come. On va le trouver de plus en plus, effectivement. Alors, on imagine de la livraison dans des situations d'extrême urgence médicale, pour des dons d'organes, ce genre de choses. Les utilisations possibles du drone, en fait, sont quasiment euh, illimitées. On ne les a même pas encore toutes découvertes. You need a pilot's license to fly a professional drone, but recreational ones only need to meet certain safety regulations. For the last five years, this market's been booming. Un produit effectivement qui est bien euh, en phase avec l'air du temps, avec effectivement la promesse de pouvoir aller très vite, de pouvoir aller partout, de pouvoir filmer, de pouvoir faire des vidéos, de pouvoir effectivement faire des selfies. On va trouver des drones qui vont commencer à 20 euros euh, et on peut monter jusqu'à des pièces qui euh, dépassent les 3 000, 4 000 euros. Donc effectivement, le marché il est extrêmement large, extrêmement diversifié et il répond en fait à tous les besoins du marché, enfants, ados, adultes, passionnés ou amateurs. C'est un des produits les plus vendus du marché. Euh, et il a encore de beaux jours devant lui avec effectivement de, de nouvelles générations de drones de course, en particulier qui arrivent là actuellement sur le marché. Ça devient un vrai spectacle à part entière et aussi un sport. Drone racing is indeed a brand new sport. The first race took place in 2013 in New Zealand, and the sport landed in France two years later. The premise is simple. Athletes remain firmly on the ground, goggles on and remote controls in hand, and fly with the help of a live feed from the drone's onboard camera. The aim is to clear obstacles and finish first. Races can take place day or night, and the drones competing on these next-gen tracks reach speeds of 130 kilometers per hour. Videos from the races usually end up online, where they rack up plenty of views. There are some that fans like Jules could happily watch on repeat. I'm trying to look at a professional drone. It's really super what he does. Ce qui m'impressionne le plus, moi, c'est les zigzags entre les arbres, passer en vitesse dans un cercle ou faire des figures et tout ça. C'est un des meilleurs jeux du monde. J'espère un jour être un champion de drone, faire des compétitions avec des grands champions. Ça serait vraiment super. What better way to start becoming a world champion drone racer than with a one-on-one -on -one lesson from a professional? Jules will also get to attend a very special drone race along the Champs Élysées and have a backstage meeting with the sport's very first world champion. Oh. Ah, c'est super ah, Non, un gros rêve. Oh. Qui se réalise. But first, it's off to the drone training center in Paris. With his mom in tow, Jules is about to meet Clément, the center's manager, who'll help him improve his hit-and-miss piloting techniques. Wow, c'est énorme cet endroit. Bonjour, tu es Jules Bonjour, oui. Bonjour, moi c'est Clément. Moi c'est Jules. Bonjour. Bonjour Alix, c'est maman Enchanté. 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 Aujourd'hui, je vais t'apprendre un peu à piloter les drones. Je vais t'expliquer comment ça fonctionne. Je vais t'expliquer les règles aussi qu'on a en France. All drones, even toy ones, are subject to strict regulations that vary from country to country. These rules are altered and amended every year, but here are some of the basics. Donc là, on est dans un espace en intérieur, donc il n'y a aucun souci, on peut faire voler les drones comme on veut. Par contre, ce qui est important, c'est pour les drones qui ont des caméras, il est interdit de filmer des gens à leur insu. Aussi, il est interdit de piloter un drone en extérieur dans une agglomération. Il est interdit aussi de piloter au-dessus de populations. Si tu voles dans un parc et qu'il y a des gens en dessous, c'est interdit. D'accord Ok. Now that Jules knows the rules, he's allowed to start having fun. Dans un premier temps, je vais te présenter donc le drone. Donc on est sur un mini drone. L'autonomie, c'est à peu près euh, 5 à 7 minutes. Donc c'est assez court, il faut changer les batteries assez régulièrement. Les LED rouges, c'est l'arrière du drone. Les LED bleus, c'est l'avant du drone. Donc on a une protection, c'est pour éviter de se faire mal aux doigts. On le prend jamais comme ça parce que c'est dangereux. Ça peut couper les doigts. Enfin, ça ne va pas te couper les doigts, mais ça peut faire un peu mal. OK Alors, au niveau du pilotage, d'abord, tu as la manette des gaz qui va te permettre au drone de décoller. Ensuite, à la manette de direction. Et tu as une troisième chose, qui est la rotation, qui va permettre au drone de tourner sur lui-même. Donc, le premier objectif, ça va être de garder le drone à mi-hauteur en face de toi, comme ça. C'est un drone non stabilisé, donc il faut toujours jouer avec les manettes des gaz et les manettes de direction. 
Donc là, on va essayer de garder le drone à peu près à cette hauteur-là, OK Pas mal. Super. Et ce que tu vas faire, c'est que tu vas mettre un peu de gaz en avant ici. Tu as tout l'espace. Donc là, tu peux y aller. Hein. Un petit peu en avant, un petit peu en avant. Ça va Ce que je te propose maintenant, c'est qu'on va tester le parcours et dans un second temps, ça sera à ton tour. Ok Ok. Et eh bien écoute, c'est parti. Attention, le décollage Oh là là, ça passe dans le tunnel Oh, le dérapage contrôlé <rire> Non mais tu pilotes vraiment trop bien, je ferai jamais ça moi. Mais si, honnêtement tu vas y arriver, j'en suis persuadé. Euh, ça a l'air un petit peu euh, difficile, mais je crois que je vais m'en sortir. Tu vas y arriver, j'en suis sûr. C'est parti. Prends ton temps, on n'est pas obligé d'aller vite. Voilà, super. N'hésite pas à mettre un peu plus de gaz en avant. Hop là. <rire> Très bien, en avant, en avant. Donc là tu vas commencer à mettre un peu de rotation, donc avec la manette de gauche tu vas mettre un tout petit peu vers la gauche. Là, on stoppe. Quand on, a, quand on est un peu perdu, on se remet derrière le drone et on est reparti. C'est super, continue comme ça. Hop. <rire> tu te fais attaquer par le drone. Allez, ouais, 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 tout droit, tout droit, tout droit. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Ouais. Là, tu peux poser, c'est bon. Bien joué, bravo. Our long training sessions like these are popping up all over France. Kids tend to have the lucky advantage of being fast learners. With steering already under his belt, Jules is ready for stage two, tricks. To ensure ultimate performance, it's time to switch drones. Ça y est, Jules, on va passer sur un modèle un peu plus performant, ok, okay. Donc là, on est sur un drone, euh, un drone stabilisé. Contrairement à tout à l'heure, quand tu vas le faire voler, le drone ne va pas bouger. J'ai juste besoin d'appuyer ici et tu vas voir, le drone ne bouge quasiment plus. Tu vois, je touche à rien. Je vais te montrer des trucs assez fun dès tout de suite. Un looping. Un looping, ok Ça va être ton tour On n'est pas sur le même drone que tout à l'heure. C'est beaucoup plus gros, plus dangereux. Donc pour faire décoller le drone, ici. Il va falloir corriger les petites erreurs parce qu'il va y avoir tendance à un chouille à partir à droite ou à gauche. Tu peux y aller un peu à gauche. Alors doucement, attention. <rire> touche à rien, touche à rien. Stop, 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 stop. On va recommencer. J'ai vu le drone s'en approcher. On est reparti. Et tu vas appuyer sur B et ici tu vas aller à gauche. Super, bien joué. Bien joué. On a aussi un truc assez sympa qui est les lunettes d'immersion. Et c'est la vue à la première personne. Donc en gros, tu es, es en immersion totale, comme si tu étais dans Star Wars, dans un vaisseau. Comme si on Star Wars. était le drone. Comme si tu étais le drone, exactement. Tu as tout compris. Je vais te donner les lunettes, mais c'est toujours moi qui pilote pour te donner un petit peu une idée de ce que fait le drone. Ah ouais, là je suis déjà dedans. Ah, là franchement, c'est incroyable. C'est parti. These glasses are holding Clément's cell phone, which receives a live feed from the drone via an app. The technology is called FPV, first person view, and Jules is currently getting a drone's eye view of the course. Coucou. Et coucou. Oh la vache, c'est incroyable. Tu pourrais faire un looping pour voir. Bien sûr. Ça me met mal à la tête. <rire> Toc, tiens, ça donne ah, la radiocommande. Je vais rester près de toi. Tu peux y aller. Et là, ce que tu vas faire, ça va faire un 360 degrés pour repérer ton espace. Et voilà. Salut. <rire> But Jules will have to come back down to earth fairly soon. His drone training session is nearing its noisy end. Pose-le, appuie sur le bouton. Voilà. <rire> C'est génial ton truc Bah ouais, c'est super Ça fait quoi comme sensation Bah en fait, on est le drone, quoi. Tu veux essayer Ouais, je veux. Bonne gerbe <rire> Tu veux de la sensation Oui, je veux T'en auras Vas-y, vas-y, vas-y Wow 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 <rire> Super Bien joué C'est génial C'est génial C'était comment C'était top C'était super On s'y croit, hein On a vraiment l'impression d'être sur le drone <rire> T'as passé à travers les portes, t'as fait des loopings Enfin, euh, c'est devenu un vrai pilote. Ouais. <rire> Jules' initiation into drone piloting may be over, but there's more action in store. He's off to the world's most beautiful avenue for a VIP experience of a truly spectacular drone race. As a bonus, he'll get to meet the first world champion drone racer. With flight speeds of over 130 kilometers an hour, it's guaranteed to be quite a ride. 
But first, we're taking a detour to the United States to look at a new phenomenon in the gaming world. Though it may have slipped under the radar for some, eSports has been gaining real traction for several years. For those not yet in the know, eSports is a video gaming term that refers to competitions played within a network, either on a console or a computer. In principle, any game with a multiplayer mode falls under the umbrella of eSports. But the arrival of the internet and the ability to go up against players all around the world has dramatically changed the face of competitive gaming. Eleven-year-old eSports fan Jonathan is already quite the expert. Esports, it's a phrase, instead of saying electronic sports, they say esports. I like in network video games that you can play with other people, even if you don't know them. So right now, I'm about to win. No, you're not. What is it? I am, because I just sit down Yeah, it. yeah, you just won. Sometimes they're better than you, sometimes they're worse. And the better they are, like, it trains you to become better. What do you say, Ike? I think that's cool because, like, for example, they went on a, on a vacation to Mexico this year. I and he met some kids yeah. from other places. So he's got a friend in, in England and they talk and they play together, play uh, which is really play. cool. And, and I really think that's very cool. I told that, you, that controller is sensitive. You know, that's it's like a, the world became like a village in some way. On TV or YouTube, you can watch the live streams of the video game tournaments. Uh -oh, Thanks to the internet and broadband, gamers from all corners of the globe are able to compete online and form teams in virtual arenas. Certain strategy in fighting games like StarCraft and Counter-Strike have already made eSports history and contributed greatly to its global success. Since 2010, League of Legends has been the world's highest selling online multiplayer game, attracting more than 100 million players a month. Over the years, the competitions have become increasingly professional. Just like in other sports, the best players compete under team banners, play for cash prizes, wear sponsored jerseys, and have die-hard fans who can now watch them play live in huge stadium tournaments, like here in Paris for the final of the European League of Legends Championship. C'est un grand show, c'est euh, aux confins en fait, euh, du sport et, euh, et du divertissement. Et c'est vraiment devenu la fête de tout le monde, la fête des joueurs professionnels, la fête des joueurs amateurs, ceux qui aiment l'univers du jeu, ceux qui aiment l'aspect compétitif. Tout le monde trouve sa place et c'est vraiment le, le grand rassemblement. Les équipes doivent faire preuve de coordination, de tactique, de stratégie pour arriver à un objectif commun. Aujourd'hui, euh, on arrive à une centaine de joueurs pro en Europe qui en vivent. Les équipes euh, ont de quoi rémunérer leurs joueurs. Les équipes aussi trouvent des sources de revenus euh, à travers des sponsors, euh, à travers de la vente euh, d'articles à l'effigie euh, de l'équipe. Il y a aussi euh, bien sûr des revenus compétitifs. S'ils performent bien euh, dans la ligue, euh, ils reçoivent forcément des, des revenus. Et puis au-delà de ça, il ben, y a les coachs, il y a les euh, préparateurs physiques, etc. Donc effectivement, il y a tout un écosystème qui est en train de se créer. Et euh, c'est aussi à nous, en tant qu'éditeurs de jeu, en fait, de, bah de, de structurer tout ça et de faire une place à tout le monde. Two teams, two coaches, several rounds, commentators shouting themselves hoarse, and a wild crowd are what await the spectators who pay around 30 euros for a ticket. And the winning team? They take home 80,000 euros and a massive cup. In 2015, the televised final of the League of Legends World Championship was watched by more than 36 million people. Six million more than watched the NBA Finals. That same year, the winning team was presented with a check that exceeded $2 million. I searched up when is the next esports tournament in Los Angeles, and it didn't really show me when, so I don't really know how to get the tickets for it, and I don't really know where it is. Actually, I want to play in um, a video game tournament, but I don't know how to compete. Like, I don't know if I have to be famous or like a really good player. Jonathan has plenty of questions, and who better to ask than some professional players? He and his dad are off to soak up the atmosphere at a real esports tournament. Yeah! Yes! Here at a theater in Los Angeles, 
professionals and amateurs spend two days going head-to-head -head in a famous fighting game, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Released in 2001, the game features leading Nintendo characters like Mario, Donkey Kong, and Pikachu. This is Red Bull's Smash Gods and Gatekeepers event. It's one of the first, hopefully, of many. This game has been out for quite a bit of time, but the community has been grassroots the entire time, and so in the last few years we've been growing and growing quite a bit, and uh, outside sponsors are coming in a little bit, so it's, it's a pretty big, pretty big deal for us right now. I originally started out as a competitive player. I even entered this particular event, but the main reason I come here is to commentate the game. So similar like how you would have commentators at sport, sports kind of like in football or basketball or whatnot, you have people in the, the crowd or people talking to the crowd the entire time. So I'm sort of playing that kind of role for Super Smash Brothers Melee. Hey, oh my. Hi. First tournament, isn't it? Yeah. Oh God, it's yeah, also it your birthday, birthday, isn't it? Yes, it's my birthday. Happy birthday! How old are you? I'm turning 10 today. Oh, you get to watch Super Smash Bros. Melee? Yeah. For your 10th birthday? Yep. It's, it's nice. Wow, look at this place. Whoa. So many TVs. Players here use old CRT monitors. A newer monitor produces a delay of a few thousandths of a second between when the information is received and when it's displayed on screen. Not an option for these serious gamers. It's so crazy. Sounds like Vegas. Yeah. This is where the bulk of the tournament takes place. There's about 800 players that start. Uh, this That happened in day one and in day two. 32 of those players end up in teams of four, so there's eight teams, and they'll be doing a normal bracket style, so eight teams goes down to four, goes down to two, and then eventually there's one champion team of four. So that happens here in the main area with all these CRT TVs. Wow. They bring their own stuff, I see. Yeah, everyone brings their own controller usually, because oh, they're a little yeah. bit particular about that. Favorite one, huh? Exactly, their favorite controller. <laughs> wow. Are the characters you see here, which would you like the best, you think? There's a Falco uh, over there. Oh, Falco. Falco? Yeah. Definitely Falco. Yeah, I like Falco the best. You like the bird? Yeah. Okay, so over here we got the main stage. But this is where the competitors are playing. That's the big screen where once they start getting into underway, they'll be on the main screen. As you can see, it's one-on-one -on -one and it's a fighting game type. I can't wait to watch. <laughs> yeah. And then that winner would raise the golden cup. I think there's, there's going to be like a trophy, so it's going to be a big check. Oh, oh they have even better than a golden cup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a big check. <laughs> At the end of the weekend, the winning team pockets $100,000. That's $25,000 per player, enough to indulge in a little post tournament shopping. What would you do if you had the prize money? Um, Buy more Smash Brothers games. I could just videos. buy more video games. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like to hear. Eliminated players take their seats as spectators and stay to watch the final battle, which is usually played out between professional players. In addition to tactical skills, these players have a very powerful weapon. They're capable of executing up to 300 actions per minute, compared to the average player's rate of 50 to 80. Those with similarly lightning-fast division skills will have worked out that that's a remarkable five actions per second. Ooh, no! Ten years ago, uh, the idea of people playing video games for money and traveling and making it a living was just kind of ridiculous until very recently, to be honest. So when I explain it to people, everyone just, no one really gets it. It's pretty weird that a lot of people come, you know, but isn't that for everything, right? Like, why is every, thousands of people coming to watch someone play music when they could just listen to their MP3 or watch it on the internet, right? For us, we need to be in the same room to be able to play. You can't play online. And then it's also just watching the best of the best play in front of a crowd and just being in the atmosphere where everyone loves the game just as much as you do. It's a really special feeling, I think. If Jonathan appears particularly captivated by this player, 
It's because 23-year-old William Edge, also known as Leffen, is considered one of the world's top six players in the game. Being an esports player is my full-time job, and it's what I do to make money. Some of the income is from tournament winnings, but a lot of it is also from sponsorships and streaming websites like YouTube and Twitch.tv. You need to be very precise with your fingers. You need to be able to, you know, be able to play eight hours, ten hours a day, and still consciously do everything so that you're not just sitting and just rolling your thumbs and waiting for something to happen. And I think you just need to be very, uh, very good under pressure because everyone's watching. You know, if you screw up, everyone's laughs at you. Today also happens to be Jonathan's 10th birthday. To make sure it's one to remember, he's been granted special VIP access to the player's box. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey, what's up? What's, up? what's your name? Jonathan. Jonathan. What's up, Jonathan? Yeah. Nice to meet you. So, Jonathan, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, too. Is this your first tournament? Um, yeah, that I've been to, yeah. How do you like it so far? Uh, I like it a lot. Well, nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you, Who's too. Who's your name? Um... I'm really going for left. <laughs> yeah. You want Team Leffen to win? Yep. You're a Fox player? Yeah. Is he your favorite player? Yeah. What's the first oh, game you've ever played? Um, the first game I've ever played would be Mario Kart 7. Well, okay. not Mario Kart 7, just like Mario Kart. That's how we started too. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we basically all, all started playing like Mario Kart, then we found Melee. And then we realized that game's a lot of fun. And then, <laughs> and then now we're all playing. That's yeah. Oh, it just never stops. <laughs> we actually travel the world and like, we go to every big city where they have big tournaments. And we do this like every weekend, so it's a lot of fun. And uh, I couldn't have asked for a better job, honestly. Yeah. Between tournaments, professional gamers on the same team often retire to a shared gaming house. A space that functions as a home, office, hangout space, and training ground all rolled into one. This one in Berlin is home base for a League of Legends team. Okay, this is the uh, round. Um, we want uh, our videos here, VODs here, our match. This is where the magic happens. As you can see that everyone is practicing here. So yeah, we spend a lot of time here. When they're not in their gaming houses, eSports players can be found on competition stages or in the box awaiting their turn. Do you ever want to be a professional eSports player? Yeah. You do? Oh. Yeah. Ooh, do you want to play Melee? Know. Is Melee your yeah, game of because, choice? Um, with my birthday money that I got, uh -huh. um, I got a Nintendo 2DS with Super Smash Bros. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something. Yeah. Something. Yeah. 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 Go on the basics. So today's my birthday, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Happy yeah. Birthday. I'm turning 10. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Nice. You know what that means, right? One, two, three. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jonathan. Happy birthday to you. Sports player. <laughs> <laughs> Future sports player. Woo! Thank you. Happy birthday. The only thing missing now is the birthday gift. Fortunately, Leffen's on hand to deliver. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, can I get your autograph? Sure. Just right here? Yeah. I hope you win. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Leffen might not have won this time around, but Jonathan has everything he could wish for scribbled on his console and a piece of paper. On my DS, I got um, Leffen and Axe to sign it down here but, um, because they're my favorite players. And here, I got um, uh, Leffen's autograph. On the other side of the world in Japan, the home of advanced technology and futuristic neighborhoods, countless high-tech toys hit the shelves every day. But there's one robot who hasn't gone out of fashion in 30 years, despite all the competition, Gundam. This giant robot with nationwide cult status started his career in 1979 in the cartoon series Mobile Suit Gundam, a futuristic adventure set against the backdrop of space warfare. The series remains popular to this day with kids and grown-ups alike. 
Akinari is among the new generation of Gundam fans. Gundam represents a subgenre of science fiction known as mecha. Mobile robots controlled or piloted by humans. The stories and characters vary, but the principle remains the same. Robots fighting wars and colonizing planets for humankind. Although this character hasn't achieved worldwide fame, here in Japan, he's firmly anchored in the country's cultural heritage. European people are machine is machine, human is me human, Gundam is machine, but also merely human. The first Gundam series wasn't hugely successful, but the robot became increasingly popular throughout the 1980s thanks to the commercialization of models and toys. The craze really took off with the arrival of Gunpla, a contraction of Gundam plastic models. These modeling kits allowed fans to assemble their very own Gundam robots, which came in a variety of sizes and skill levels. The model robots followed developments in the cartoons and were categorized based on their difficulty, from the simplest to the most sophisticated. The toy franchise is owned by Bandai and has certainly been a good earner for the company. In 35 years, more than 459 million Gunpla have been sold. One model-making enthusiast has even inherited the title of Gunpla Master. He's agreed to give Akinari a very special initiation here in the Temple of Gunpla Models. Master Kawaguchi will share a few tips on how to stay on top of the intricate construction and point out some unique Gunpla made by actual champions. We're off to Odaiba, a district in Tokyo where tourists are greeted by a giant Gundam statue measuring exactly 19.7 meters, his official height in the cartoon. Unicorn Gundam is 1.7 meters taller than the statue it recently replaced, which had stood at the spot since 2012. It's still a new marvel on the cityscape. Oh, look at even more robots can be found at specialist stores. Like this one here, the brand new Gundam base. This space is home to around 2,000 different kinds of Gunpla, from the simplest to the most complex models. The level of difficulty depends on various criteria, including number of pieces, model scale, and degree of painting required. Many fans excel in customizing their Gunpla to create completely unique models. These enthusiasts often meet to show off their creations, some of which may end up on display as works of art. There's even a Gunpla World Cup, which recognizes the most accomplished creations, with Master Kawaguchi on the jury. It's safe to say this Gunpla expert has plenty of tips for Akinari. <laughs> で、このガンダムベースに僕が作ったものもいくつか置いてあるので、せっかくなんでじゃあ見てもらおうか。あ、これを作ってって言って。あ、これ。これとこれ。すごい。あ、すごい。こう。うちの方がちょっと難しいっ
。で、これを割とね、最初に作るっていう方が多いんだけど、これがだいたい七十個ぐらいだな。部品点数が。だから比較的作りやすい。作り、なんかく。で今ねあのワンプラ世界大会っていうのを毎年やってるんですよ。とですねこのワールドカップ GBWC っていうのがそのコンテストのタイトルになるんですけどもそのレギュレーションっていうのは世界レギュレーションになるんですが工作それからペイントそれとアイディアっていう3つのポイントで全部審査するんですね。で工作とペイントっていうのは要はスキルレベルの戦いになるのでうまさっていうのはどんどん身がうまくなっていくわけです。でただ練習すればそこっていうのはみんなやっぱうまくなるんですけども最後のアイデアっていうのは多分皆さんそれぞれのアイデアっていうのがやっぱり違うものなのでそこのアイデア自分のクリエイティビティをどうやってその作品の中に、えー、入れていくのか。人も今までの、えー、世界一になった人たちの作品なのでえー、っと日本の去年優勝した作品横田さんっていう人の作品ね。このヘビみたいなのが、えー、とタイの人が作ったとこれは僕結構怖,怖い、うん、これもね全部ガンプラのパーセスみたいなえっ、ー、とカマキリカマキリがねマレーシアかなこれもねだからガンプラのパーセスなんですすごい,すごい It takes years of hard work and dedication to get to this level and Akinari isn't there quite yet So Master Kawaguchi has chosen a slightly more manageable 150-piece model for today's lesson. It'll still take Akinari hours, but fortunately, the master's got a few tricks up his sleeve. じゃあね、えっ、ー、とまあ今日はねこのえっ、ー、とオーガンダムっていうの作ってもらうと思うのね。箱開けるとまあもう一回作ってくれてるから多分わかると思うんだけど、まあ袋に入っててでね今これを見てもらうとね、あれなんだけど。今作ってるのはどこかなっていうのが分かってくると例えばこの辺はね足なんだこの辺に腕のパーツが集まっているでこの辺の頭のとことかね大体こうエリアで分かれてるからそういうのをやっぱり探す時の手がかりになるよねあんま心配しなくて大丈夫でえっ、ー、とねニッパー使う時に作った後ね綺麗になる方法はちょっと教えといてあげるで切る時にこの部品のギリギリのところから少し離れたところをまず切ってもらうあそういうことかうんで取れるから少し残ってるじゃないで残ってるところを後からもう一回ね切ってくださいパーツにギリギリのところで最初から切ろうとするとね部品傷つけちゃう時があるよねでこうするとねあのー、割と綺麗に。下からね入れると割と切りやすいかもしれない。ああ、うん、こういうことか。うん。そう,そう自分で切るところ見えるでしょう、うん。確かに切りやすい。そういうのもほら、あんまりこういうの説明書には書いてないけど、いろいろ工夫してみるとね作りやすさっていうのは発見できる。あ、入った。うん、ああ、彼見てるとすごくもうその辺はスムーズにやってるんで。そういう空間把握能力はねすごくあるなと思って見てるんですけど。はい。ね。でこの場合はねで、えー、ここまで来ました。もっと出てたこれガンダムになってたリフト時が一番嬉しい。ジアン楽しいのは一個一個部品をはめるごとになんか一個一個できたとかそういうのが感じる、うん、感じがいい楽しい。結構ねそういうの大事なんだよ。ここまでできたぜガンダムの体と頭の部分えー、かっこいい。で今ちょっとこちら持ってきてもらったのがこれ色塗って仕上げてるんだけど全然違うガンプラを組み合わせたりとか、まあ、これでいくとねもともとのガンダムに武器のセットって別にあったりするのね。うん、ううの組み合わせると自分だけのガンダムガンプラができたわけだからこうやってね結構楽しんでる人っていうのはすごく多いですね。まあ、できるかなこれ、うんそーっとそーっとだからいやここをこう立てばいけるかも。
あ、確かにこれはかっこいいわ。こ<笑>れ、えっと、ついた。かわいい。And just like that, using a body from home and the head of his new Gundam, Akinari's made a customized gun club. The model's not only cooler, it also means he's already finished. It seems Master Kawaguchi is not the only one with some tricks for speeding up the process. Akinari can return home with his own gun club masterpiece, the first of many. お疲れ様でした。夢のようになったんじゃなくて、夢よりはるか遠くになった。今日はありがとうございました。And now it's back to France, where we're about to stroll down the most beautiful avenue in the world. The street has already been closed to traffic, and instead is filled with an obstacle course surrounded by a giant safety net. In a few moments, some of the world's top drone pilots will be battling it out on this spectacular course. While the regular spectators congregate on the sidelines, Jules and his dad have VIP backstage access. Directement dans le tunnel, faire demi-tour dans le tunnel, remonter, passer dans la boîte blanche et après filer le long de la vue. C'est deux minutes, c'est très technique et évidemment c'est bien filé donc il est filé dès qu'on touche un peu. Qu'est-ce qu'il gagne à la fin Alors nous on est la seule course qui ne donne pas d'argent à la fin, à part le prestige d'avoir volé sur l'avenue de Gilles-Élysée qui est l'avenue du 14 juillet, etc. Un peu comme. But the cash prizes can reach astronomical sums. In 2005 in Dubai, for example, the prize money for the team to win the first drone Grand Prix was a whopping one million dollars. All the competing drones are carefully weighed before the race. Today's rules state that each machine must be at least 700 grams. Two teams of four, eight drones in total, will compete in each round, which the audience can follow on a large screen broadcasting images from the onboard cameras. With eight drones in the air at once, disaster is bound to strike. The finish line is a net at the end of the course. The first of the eight drones to hit the net qualifies its team for the next round. One of these pros is Belgian pilot Vincent, also known as Vince B, the first world champion in drone racing history, and next up on stage. La tension est là, euh, la pression on se la met toujours trop, et donc euh, ça fait partie du jeu d'apprendre à, à justement contrôler ses émotions. On s'imagine que c'est pas très sportif, pourtant on a un cœur qui bat à 180 pulsations. En course, les vitesses atteintes sont proches des 150 km h On tremble et on est lessivé après 1 minute 30 maximum de course. Le fait de participer à des grandes compétitions internationales et fin de l'année, j'ai été surpris de me retrouver avec le plus grand nombre de points et de devenir un champion du monde. Vincent trains in hangars like this as well as out in the open. He even builds all his competition drones himself. C'est mon atelier de création. Je viens dessiner la plupart de mes drones ici pour chacune des compétitions. 
pourrait très bien utiliser des drones qu'on retrouve dans le commerce, mais ça me tient à cœur de pouvoir dessiner les drones qui me conviennent et qui sont exactement ce que je recherche en termes d'aéro, de performance, de poids, de taille d'hélice. Quand je conçois un drone, ben je commence évidemment par essayer d'imaginer ce que j'aimerais retrouver sur un drone, quelle hélice je vais utiliser, quel type de batterie. Et ça me permet de commencer à l'ordinateur à pouvoir graphiquement euh, le dessiner. Je l'imprime en 3D. Après, je fais un choix des matériaux. Ça permet justement, avec des choix techniques, d'arriver de plus en plus près de ce qu'on voudrait faire. Je le fais couper et je le reçois et le déballe et le monte très rapidement. En championnat du monde, ce que j'utilise, c'est donc un drone de 5 pouces. Il a voyagé avec moi un petit peu partout. Il a été à Hawaï, il a été en Corée. C'est un drone qui est réglé exactement comme il faut, léger, donc très agile. Celui-ci est vraiment préféré. Quoi. Oh, bien Vincent, champion du monde 2016. Jules and his dad are heading backstage to meet the world champion himself. He's agreed to share some advice with this aspiring drone pilot. Bonjour, le champion du monde. Bonjour. Jean-Philippe. Jean-Philippe. Bonjour. Gilles. Oui, c'est ça. Quel est là-dessus 10 ans. Explique-moi un peu ce que tu aimes bien là-dedans. Bah, j'aime beaucoup les drones. Toi-même Oui, j'en ai un. C'est vrai Je m'amuse beaucoup avec. Si ça se trouve, tu sais quoi T'as peut-être commencé avant moi. Non, mais c'est vrai. Ah, bah, tout ça, ça est tout espoir. Bah, oui, en plus, mais une... il a 9 ans, j'en ai 39. Ça nous met 10 ans. 10 ans. Pardon, pardon. 10 ans, j'en ai 39. Ça fait quasiment 30 ans de différence. 29. Non, c'est dingue. Ah, bah, c'est la relève. Hein. Ah, ouais, mais c'est assez dehors. Entre nous, juste pour te dire un truc, le champion d'Espagne pour le moment, tous les cas un qui m'a battu récemment d'ailleurs, il a 9 ans, il est haut comme toi. Euh, il est pile poil le même format, quoi, non c'est... Faut pas spécialement avoir de l'âge pour bien se débrouiller. Bah, super Celui-là, en fait, je l'ai fait pour ici. Il est assez lourd, hein, j ai, j ai ouais, il est très lourd. Je suis à 750. Hein. Les images que j'ai vues là de la course, c'était vraiment impressionnant. Les drones, ils allaient vraiment vite. J'en ai vu se cracher plusieurs fois. Ah oui, ça, il y en a eu beaucoup. Et il y a ces frigos qui se crachent autant là Bien sûr. Ouais. Dès que ça vole à 8, on démarre à 8. Ouais, et puis on sort en pack, pack, pack. Ouais, on se fait toucher ça, trois fois ça, ça au départ. C'est beaucoup 8 pour voler ensemble. Euh, T'as quoi comme sensation quand tu pilotes le drone Je me retrouve un petit peu comme si j'étais en moto. Sauf qu'on est en 3D, donc on peut monter et descendre, c'est l'avantage. Je suis en mode course, que ce soit pour un karting, une moto, c'est vraiment ce qu'on trouve. Je t'encourage d'ailleurs, si tu veux essayer de, de t'améliorer ou de de gagner en expérience au niveau de tes trajectoires, à peut-être faire un petit peu de karting avec papa et claquer son porte pour te faire rouler dans tout ça et tester Merci. ça. Merci. 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 Et tu lui rends ouais. Ah, merci. C'est gentil. Au revoir. Super sympa. Ouais, il était sympa, hein Ouais. Vachement accessible. Hein. Je suis vraiment en fait impressionnée par euh, le champion du monde. Il m'a donné de bons conseils pour euh, bien utiliser le drone. Donc, euh, bah, je suis Jules is now fully equipped to become the next world champion drone racer. All that's left to do is put in some serious training. Because no matter how high tech these drones, video games and robots are, it's the skill and talent of the person behind them that makes them truly incredible.